Hi there, it's Peter here again, the guy who hates tomatoes but loves front-end development. In today's video, you will learn a lot about Git, the basics of Git, how to create a repo, how to clone it, how to create commits and much more. But before we do that, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss all the other Git videos. And we'll start by creating a repository on GitHub. So create account, login, and create your new repository. I will call my Git tutorial. Leave all the settings as a default. Cre click on create repository. And now we have the link that we can clone on our local computer. Okay, there's a few other options how to do it with the Git commands. But for now, let's just grab this URL and go to the terminal. Here I will navigate to my desktop and I've got a folder for YouTube Demos 2020. That's where I want to clone this new repository. And the command to clone it is git clone and pasting the URL. Okay, so this is the command that will clone our empty repository. As you can see, there's also a warning. This is an empty one, okay, which is okay. We'll be adding files in later on. But if we go to Finder or any folder explorer, you'll see that the Git tutorial folder has been created. That's the name of the tutorials. That's the name of the repository we've created on GitHub. But what if we wanted to create it and clone it into our own custom folder? The command would have to be the same, but at the end, we would have to type in our own new custom name. Okay, so if you want to check it out into your own folder, and override the default name of the repository, just simply add it to the end of it. Okay, now I'm creating it again, but this time it's cloning into my custom name. Okay, in Finder, these are identical, both empty repositories, but one of them is a default name and one of them is my own. Now let's open it in VS Code by typing code and comma. This will open a VS Code instance with this folder as a workspace. And actually I want to go inside one of these and open that, okay? So let's repeat it. Let's go inside of the Git tutorial and open this one in VS Code. Now we have empty workspace in VS Code and the Git tutorials as the Git repository. Now let's create a new file, call it whatever you like. I called my test.txt and in that file, I will just write, write line one, save it. And if we go to the Git tab of VS Code, you'll see that there are some uncommitted changes. So this is the new file just created. And in the hover, you'll see that there is a note that this file is untracked because Git doesn't know anything about this file at the moment. Okay, so I'll go to the terminal of VS Code by pressing the Ctrl and tilde. And here we can type in git status. That's the first command you should know about. And that lets you see what's currently happening with your repo. You are on a master branch. There are no commits yet. And there are some untracked files and Git is telling you to add them using the git add command. And this is the file that is currently not being tracked. Okay, so let's add the test.txt by git add and the name of it. Now it is tracked. Now it's moved from the untracked to the stage state changes. So we'll get to how, how it works, what's untracked, what's tracked, what's staged, what's unstaged a little bit later on. But for now, just if we run the git status again, you'll see that now it's ready to be committed and it's tracked by Git. Okay, so the first thing you need to know, if you create a new file that the Git doesn't know about, you need to add it and the command is git add. We could also use git add and dot that would include all the other files. So if we would create three or four files, instead of specifying them one by one, git add and all three file names, you can simply add git add and dot or git and hyphen and a. The hyphen and a is a shortcut for all. So you can either type in 
hyphen hyphen all or just the shortcut a or even quicker is just dot so git add dot would add all other files and actually we can do that as well just so you know create a new file and one more file okay so we have multiple files we don't need to write any content or actually put something in there save both files and now we'll see again two untracked files and if we add git add and dot we should see both of them being added at the same time okay so instead of doing them manually one by one we can use the git add dot a shortcut let's say we made a mistake and we don't want to track the test.txt okay so we can remove that from the tracking and make it again untracked file so we can revert that by typing git rm and cached file name okay so cached and then the file name so dot test txt that should move that file back to unchanged or untracked file and still keeps the content in so it doesn't remove it doesn't destroy the file it only moves it from the staged changes so the changes that are ready to be committed and moves the file back to being untracked okay so github would now or git would ignore the test.txt and only these two files would be tracked now let's go back to working on the project okay so we'll remove uh, some of these files we only keep the text test.txt so i'll remove these two files and we only keeping test.txt so just keep one one file we'll refresh the view and as you can see that we've removed it but it is still in the staged changes this is very important part how the git local changes are moved and how to how they moved from untracked to staged and then to the actual commit and i just wanted to show you this okay so we've got still the, the staged changes including these two files but untracked is the two changes where we delete them okay so to give you a visual indication of what's happening here we have the working directory which is what you see in vs code so in the file browser in the explorer of vs code you see what's called your working directory when you git add your files it goes to a staging area and then when you commit it it actually creates a hash for the commit and it's like a save button which takes all your changes from staged area and makes them a git commit okay so it's very important that you understand these three stages and the staging area it's like a middleman between your changes and what will be safe to git okay so hopefully this visual indication helps you to understand that what's happening here we have some changes they are uncommitted they are unstaged which is the two things where we which is the two files which we deleted but in the staged changes we still have these two files with the content previously okay so just to, to merge these two together we'll simply need to type in the command again and git add and dot and that merges these two together which means the two files are removed and the test file is staged okay so git add merges both your untracked and the staged changes the staging area or staged area into one okay so that's the result hopefully it is now much clearer than before now we can commit our changes type in git commit hyphen m and then in quotes we need to type in any message that describes our changes we'll just type in new file for now okay make sure you are a little bit more descriptive in your real world projects for now this will do it so git commit hyphen n and the message we want to attach to this commit and that will be used when we then later on going through all our commits you can from a high level see which changes you've made what features you worked on so the message is quite important that it's very clear okay so we'll, if, if we do that we have now our changes move so we've done our first commit okay this is big achievement i'm so proud of you guys so proud you'll see that vs code also changed my master in the terminal from the yellow to green which means it's not dirty my working 
working space is not my workspace is not dirty anymore from any unstaged changes or uncommitted changes. And here is a quick summary as well what happened. Okay, so we've edited and changed one file, and this is the file name. Okay, this little ID or number that's a hash, that's a that's a that's the hash of the commit. We can later on refer to this and check it out exactly at this moment of the project lifespan. Now let's check the git status again. And we'll see that we should be ready to be able to push it. Your branch is based on origin master, but the upstream is gone. Okay, so let's go back to Git and see what we forgot. So creating a new repository on the command line. We've done initiation, we've done the commit. We'll try to do the Git remote add origin. Okay, that seems to be already done. So let's now Git push and the origin to master. Okay, so now we're pushing our master, our local master branch to the origin. And that should make it in sync. You only need to do it once when you're creating the Git repository from start, from scratch. So if you're checking out already existing repo, you will not have the same issue. But if you followed me from the start and created your own repo, then you will need to follow this step as well. Now we are on master and git status tells us that our branch is up to date with the origin master and there's nothing commit and the working tree is clean working tree is the working directory okay if we look at the one line git log we'll see the id or the hash of the commit where the head is currently pointing which is the master and the message new file which we've added to the first commit. Okay, the head is a virtual pointer to a specific hash or commit. We'll get to it in my future videos, but for now, this should work fine. If we quit and go back to GitHub, we should see our file committed and the content of it is exactly what we had locally. Now let's recap what you've learned in this video. At the start, we did create a new repo on GitHub. We've cloned it into our own custom folder or the default folder. You know how to create file, how to add it using the git add command, how to check the status of your working directory, how to add multiple files with the git add and dot or hyphen and a, and how to remove staged file to be untracked again using the rm command, and also how to commit it with your custom message. Okay, later on we had to push our local master branch and sync it with the remote master branch on the origin. You only have to do this once if you're initiating the repo for the first time, not in the future. You will be able to just git push and git pull. And then at the end we checked the, the lock, the git lock one line where it gives you a nice view, nice one line view of all the commits on the repository. And that's it all for today. Hope you've enjoyed these basics of Git. And if you did, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the next video where we'll be exploring Git branches. Until then, happy coding. Bye.